say hello, little big guys. Say hello to the double O crew. You're not even looking at the camera, genius. Right here. Yeah, there you go. The camera. The camera. Hello, creepy creature. Say, we got a good video coming for you guys. Right? Little fat cheeks. Little fat cheeks. What are you doing, little fat cheeks? Huh? Little fat cheeks. <laughs> Hello, double O crew. Before we get this video started, I got a question. So, how many of you guys actually like the hunting videos from the last couple years? I'm contemplating, hunting season is in uh, like five days, so I'm contemplating whether I should do hunting videos this year because I didn't really get a lot of uh, views or a lot of feedback or comments too many on the hunting videos, so I'm just trying to figure out whether I should actually, I'm, I'm not, I'm definitely hunting regardless, I'm never going to stop that, but I'm just trying to figure out whether I should actually do the uh, filming while I hunt and make videos for you guys or not. So let me know for sure if that's something you guys will be on in, into or whatever. Okay guys, so what we're doing here is going to be a catch and cook on the spot. Say you're out fishing one day and hey, I just wanna eat some of these fish right here, you know, for whatever reason, maybe just out of hunger or just out of curiosity what that fish tastes like. Just check your regulations, make sure it's a fish you can keep, the size you can keep, and. You're good to go. You only need a very few small amount of things. One being fishing rod and some type of gear to catch them. Today I'm just going with a bobber or a little split shot and small hook and a little piece of bait that I can find laying around anywhere. I can find worms, I can find bugs. You don't need lures, you don't need all that other stuff. Literally all you need is something to catch a fish with. So this could even be used in like survival situations. So literally you just walk around you can either find bait in the water if you have a net or something, under a rock, helgramites, little nymphs, crayfish, or up here on the, if you can find some dirt with a log, flip the log, get some worms, get a bug, any, any type of bug, little flies, whatever you can grab and catch to put on your hook will work for panfish or most stream species. So that's all you need for that. And then all you would need is matches or a lighter to start your fire with, and then all you would need other than that is something to gather wood maybe like a little hatchet or a machete or if not just walk around with your hands pick up a bunch of sticks find uh you know smaller sticks for tinder kindling and then use your bigger sticks to bottom i'll show you that in a minute and then that's pretty much it so well, i'll show you guys how to uh make the quick little fire real nice and easy and then I'll show you guys, so obviously, hopefully you know how to catch a fish simply with a piece of live bait. And then I'll show you guys how to cook that fish very simply and quickly over that fire. I flipped the rock, found a little worm. I'm going to cut that worm in two or three pieces just to try to prolong my bait life in case my bait gets taken. And um, like I said... For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to catch one fish and then show you guys how to do it. But obviously, if you're really trying to eat, the more fish and especially the bigger fish you get, the better. But um, for this, I'm just going to catch something. As long as it's something legal to keep and uh, legal size, then we're going to cook it up and eat it regardless of the size as long as it's actually big enough to eat. You know, which is like to me, like as long as it has a decent size fillet, like a four inch fillet or bigger. It's big enough to eat. It's like a McDonald's chicken nugget at that point. But anyway, yeah, so let's uh, catch this fish real quick. And uh, also, yeah, for your fire, pretty much as easy. You just want rocks in a little circle. This one happened to be here, clearly, because I wasn't picking that up. Rocks in a circle just so you have something contain the fire, preferably near the water, too, so you can splash up on it if it starts to get out of control. But obviously, it's sand covered around rocks. That fire ain't going nowhere. Um, but just for safety reasons, you know, always get in the habit of making a nice, secure, tight fire. And it's not going to be a big fire anyway. You're just cooking, in this situation, one fish. And hopefully in your situation, maybe like five or maybe just one big fish. Who knows? But either way, for any of it, you don't need a big fire. It's pretty simple. Let's catch this fish. So I just threaded the worm on the hook. 
Got a little split shot. I'm not going to use the bobber. Probably won't need to. But, you know, always nice to have something different just in case one thing doesn't work. But most likely just a small hook. And this split shot will work. I didn't get it in the deeper hole in the first cast. All right, there we go. Got it there on the second cast. So this should catch us a fish right here real quick. All right, fish on. And we have a fall fish. Beautiful fish to keep and cook. Not a big one, but you know, they're a bony fish, but the meat tastes like trout. So it's as close as we can come to a trout here since there's not any trout in this water. But since I do have one half a worm left, I'm gonna try one more time. Maybe get two fish, but you can see how quick and easy that is. As long as you have some type of live bait, it's not hard to catch a fish. And anytime I take any game, whether it's fish, whether it's deer, squirrel, geese, whatever I kill, I never waste anything. And what I mean by that is, a lot of people think that if you don't eat everything on it, you're wasting it, but you're not. As long as you give back to nature, I feel like I took that, whatever it was, life. Therefore, I need to give something back. I took from nature, I'm gonna give back to nature. So I'm gonna take what I want off of it, what I can use off of it. And anything left over, I'm gonna dump the leftovers and the carcass back in the water, back in the woods. So that way nature can reuse what I took. Nature gets something back from what I took. So I never want anything to go to waste at all. And that's what I mean by that. All right, there's a fish. What do we got? Another fall fish. All right. So we got two fall fish to cook. I don't know, we might get something else because I still got some worm left. Let's give it a try. And our last fish is a little tiny smallmouth, which took the rest of the worm. So we won't be keeping him. <laughs> they got to be 12 inches to keep in Maryland. And he's only about four, so unfortunately, he's getting thrown back. Well, not unfortunately, because there's not much meat on him anyway, but unfortunately, because smallmouth are amazing tasting fish. So unfortunately that he wasn't big enough. But yeah, okay, five casts, three fish, two to eat, and that took less than 10 minutes on one piece of worm, literally one little tiny worm. So not hard to do at all. So when you're collecting your wood, you don't want anything alive. You can burn a lot uh, live wood, but it just takes a little longer and it's a little harder. You want something not rotten, but dead. So the way I indicate that is this, if you notice this right here, it doesn't just clean, snap and break. This on the other hand, just snaps easily. That snapping wood like that is what you want to use. That's perfect for fire. Don't use anything wet, obviously, and uh, try to find that wood that snaps as much of it as you can like that perfect piece just snapped right in half that one is okay but it's still got a little bit of life to it didn't clean snap it's kind of see and it's kind of green and real real white in the middle it'll work but it's not perfect also never get any vines always just go with twigs and branches little logs and stuff <laughs> last thing you want to do unless you know exactly what kind of vine you're getting and you're really good and knowledgeable on the stuff, the last thing you want to do is pick up a poison vine and cook with it. Something like this. It's handy to have a tool like a machete. You can pop that right off of there and it's good wood. The rest of it's a little wet, so we're not going to use that. Also, you don't want any real dirty wood either because dirty wood doesn't burn so good. For your fire, you're gonna need to set a base with some finger or thumb size pieces of wood like this. Uh, I mean, sizes in like the circumference. You're gonna put that down as a base, keep it up off the wet ground. And then you wanna leave a space underneath. So two this way and then two on top. That way it gets airflow underneath of it. Cause that air feeding underneath is what's gonna help the fire. Then you're going to take thin little wood like that and put that right on top that's what you're going to start your fire with and underneath of that we're going to use one of these matches and actually start the fire and what you want after that is a pile of wood like that 
little bit thicker pieces to feed the fire as you go and get it built up to where you're gonna cook. So I'll show you that in a second. First, let me show you how to clean these fish real quick. All you need is a little knife of any kind, as long as it's pretty sharp. And pretty much everything, this fish is already dead by the way, I killed it, I smashed its head. That way you don't gotta worry about it suffering and whatever else. Pretty much all you're gonna do, start right here. There's a little V where the uh, gills meet down here. You're gonna make a cut in, kind of like you're gutting a deer. You're gonna go all the way down to the anus, come out of the anus, right there. Where that lower tail fin is, just like that. Then you're gonna take it under the water with your thumb. Put the knife right there. Under the water with your thumb. Put your thumb in up here. And just take your thumb down and take all those guts out. Just let them all wash downstream. All kinds of other fish, crayfish, all kinds of stuff will eat that. Just clean it out real good with your thumb. Just all up inside the rib gauge. Get everything out so that all that's left on the rest of the fish. is that it's completely empty in there it's all you have to do you're going to leave the head on because you're going to put a stick in the mouth so that's one fish ready to cook you're going to need yourself a stick with a pretty sharp end on it small thin sharp end you're going to put it right in his mouth and it should come right in that section you just made just like that there's one fish on, we'll do the second fish, get him on there, and then they're ready to cook. On the second one, just in case you guys don't have a knife handy on you, you don't need a knife. All you gotta do, same thing, just take your thumb, it's a little harder, but get your thumb, it's better if you have fingernails, pop it open just like I just did, and same thing, just rip all that out. Do it in the water, just run your thumb down that, inside along the rib cage so you can feel the spine take all that junk out sorry if the uh, camera wasn't on it I couldn't tell there I hate this chesty I'm getting a head strap again I missed so much footage with this stupid thing so there you go that was without the knife it's a little more sloppy but you can still do it without the knife so that's that completely cleaned out just popped it like I said with my thumb really put a lot of pressure and then scooped everything on out of there and you can do the same thing right through the mouth stick comes out in that section you just made and your fish are ready to be cooked and then you're gonna just take a spot if you don't have sand or something to put a stick in to where it'll actually stay you're gonna need another stick to prop this one up but for now, it's going to sit just like that. And it'll cook right over the fire just like that. So let's get this fire started and then cook these fish. Okay, guys, sorry. Well, I'm not, you, you don't even know why I'm saying sorry, because to you it's just a second later. But for me, it's three days later, actually, believe it or not. Okay, so let me tell you what happened. Pretty much, my GoPro battery died. I didn't have a new one. <laughs> So I had to cook those fish off camera and eat them off camera, but I am back days later now. Oh, those uh, fall fish, they were good. Uh, one thing I would say with those, cause they're like trout, I would cook them a little longer and melt the bones because they were pretty bony. Like trout, if you cook them for a little bit longer on a higher heat, they aren't as bony. All those actually, all of the bones melt out if you cook it right. Well, so what I did was came back this time I brought a lighter because I actually used all of the matches um, starting that last fire because that pile of wood that I had last time was way too small and it didn't have nearly enough dry wood. Most of it was damp, but now it's been rain free for a couple days and I gathered a good pile right there, a good pile right there. So we have plenty of wood. This lighter should do the trick as far as keeping the fire going now. And I caught a pretty little red breast. 
and actually a pretty decent red breast off camera just because you know no point showing that we already showed that part of it it's already gutted and ready to go so we're just going to pick up where we left off just with a different fish and a different fire and a lighter instead of matches so pretty much like i said before all you want to do is make sure you got the fire set up the right way with a nice base so the air can get underneath of it have a lot of tinder down by the uh the bottom put some kindling on top once you get your kindling going these thicker pieces that you throw through the middle should catch nicely like this stuff and you can start adding on i mean today we're only cooking one fish so we're obviously not going to need all this but you know just just for the video purpose so without further ado let's get this fire lit this time and actually going and then we will cook this fish see all you want to do is just make sure you there's nothing really there to light you want to get down in the middle below and light something that's going to catch like that tender there it goes in at the bottom that tender's catching All right, now once it starts lighting, you want to make sure you keep it well oxygenated. Everything's starting to catch now. Kind of blow on it. Spread it around to the other pieces of wood. And maybe try to light the other side somewhere down in there too. Get it going. And once you get two sides going at once, you should get yourself a nice fire going. There we go. It's catching pretty good. All right, so I'm going to let that warm up for a minute. Put this back in my pack, and we'll start cooking that fish. Oh, yeah, it's burning nice. All right, so if you have sand, it's pretty convenient. You just dig the stem of it in the sand and... Lean it right over the fire, just like that. Just so, the, just so the flames barely lick the fish. The very tips of them, you just want to dance around the fish. You don't want to put it way down in there because it'll burn. And then keep that on there for about, I don't know, five, six minutes. Flip it. After the fish gets real char charred and black on the outside and real crispy, it's ready to go on both sides. And then you know with a tester, you just check and see if your meat's flaky. If it flakes real easy, you're, you know it's done. If it's not flaking easy, then it's not going to be ready to go. And that flame's getting kind of high, actually. Sheesh. So let me move this stick. I might actually just hold this. And uh, like I said, if that meat's not flaky, then you're just going to keep cooking until that meat gets flaky. And you'll be able to peel that skin right off and just test it and see. So we'll get back to you when this thing is close to done. So I don't know if you can tell here, but I got one side completely finished. Nice and charred and black. Just got to get the other side charred like that, and then you're good to go. Don't expect it to be, you know, super moist fish either, because you're, you're cooking a lot of the moisture out of the meat. You're kind of smoking it, actually. So it's going to be more consistency of smoked fish rather than, like, grilled or fried or anything like that. But if that's your thing, then it's perfect, which I love smoked fish. It's my favorite, so. The higher up like this, you keep it above the fire, the more it's going to smoke rather than, like, just heat cook from the flames themselves. And the more moist the meat will be, but it's going to take a lot longer. The closer you have down, it'll cook quicker, but you're going to have drier meat. So it all depends on what you like, really. When your fish starts peeling the scales like this and they just start coming off by themselves, you know you're done. So this fish is done, good to go and ready to eat. I'm just gonna let it cool off and then show you guys how to end this whole process. If you want a little extra smoky flavor, when that fire starts burning down like that and that's more just smoke coming up, just let your fish, fish rest up above so all the smoke just hits it. To get yourself some super super extra smoky fish all right so now it should be pretty much cooled off completely to where you can actually hold it in your hand without having to uh worry about your fingers burning and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna simply start picking away at this bad boy 
I'm just gonna expose that white meat. There's no bones in the side of a sunfish, so you don't gotta worry about none of that. Crack it open. All beautiful white meat in there. Whew. All right, so like I said, all white meat, no bones in the side fillets. You just pull them right on off of there. Get it separated from that skin and bon appetit. Really good. Not seasoned at all, obviously, but just as far as that smoky fish flavor, it's not bad at all. Nothing inside that tail. Like I said, any scraps I like to throw into the water, or you can leave on the bank, something will eat it. Just as long as it doesn't go to waste. Like throwing it out in nature anywhere is not going to go to waste. So. And you have a whole another side too, you can do the same thing with. Peel that skin off. Got a whole white fillet exposed right there. And then you can use your handy dandy stream to wash your hands off. Then you just got to worry about making sure your fire is completely out. So what I like to do is douse it with water, then I bury it in the sand, and the process is done. So that's about it for this survival catch and cook type video. We will see you next time on Obsession Outdoors. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. And peace.